So a little bit about me, for those who don't know, know me, um, Ross Cockrum, CEO and co-founder of Punchmark. Um, a little background on me, some fun facts. Um, I used to, prior to co-founding Punchmark, um, I used to work at IJO, Independent Jewelers Organization. Um, and so went to Antwerp, Belgium quite a few times, got to escort jewelers through the diamond districts in South Africa and stuff like that. Um, several trade shows over there and um, made a lot of connections in the industry. And, you know, since then started Punchmark um, in 2008, about 15 years ago. And I am really lucky because I get to work alongside my brother and my best friend that I grew up with. Um, my best friend, Dan, who you'll meet tomorrow in the owner's Q&A. Uh, we used to, Brian and I built a studio in our basement. We were like when I was 13 and whatever, and we would produce uh, hip hop music uh, back then. So uh, in other words, I, I spit bars, yo. Um, so, but, uh, but that was some fun stuff that we used to do. And we always had a really, really good rapport. Uh, Dan and myself, he was my co-producer. And um, we always talked about maybe going into business together and doing something and something. And one day our paths converged and I was working in the music industry, uh, recording studios in Manhattan. It was, you know, a completely different life. I've uh, got my degree in audio engineering and, and whatnot, so I don't apply any of that today except for putting on lapel mics and, uh, you know, but um, so fast forward into Punchmark, um, one of the first things that we did as a company was we created a Antwerp marketing program. Um, Antwerp, like, has my heart. I love that place, and it's a really good way to add an authentic and really cool customer experience journey to your business. Um, it's a, a romantic story of Antwerp and, you know, two thirds of the world's diamonds are cut and traded there. And, you know, you're the Antwerp guy or gal who's going to go 10,000 miles across the, the world to hand select the perfect diamond for you. Right. And that, that story works. It's really, really cool. So we started punch mark with this Antwerp marketing campaign. Uh, it was called Sweeter Than Chocolate. Uh, it was really fun. We took pictures of diamonds sitting among chocolates and it's like rich velvety materials, a nice look. Um, and it went pretty well, you know, it was the, for the couple of the few people who did it. I think we only had like, you know, 10 people who signed up for the program. We were, you know, really, really new. And the people who did it, one person had sent our invitations out and did like $40,000 in pre-sales before she left for Antwerp. And we were very proud of that and that fact that we were actually getting results. So Punchmark's tagline is everyone has a story. Let us help you tell yours. And, you know, it's one of the, re like it's taking our history of songwriting and all that fun stuff into marketing and taglines and branding and things like that. And so that's just kind of a little backstory of our roots, um, how we got to where we are today. We took a pretty major pivot into websites and technology. So um, what's, what's interesting about that journey of our tagline, everyone has a story, let us help you tell yours. It became more like everyone has a story, let us give you the tools that you can tell yours, right? So, so in a way, we, I, don't want, I don't wanna say we got off track from our original you know, mission, um, but we are reviving an Antwerp marketing program this year and we're excited about it. Um, and it, it's gonna start off being a lot more digital. Back in 2008, there was a lot of like printed materials and stuff. Um, but that's kind of how we got our roots and why um, I, I enjoy content itself uh, as it comes in all forms. And so that's kind of my little segue into my presentation. So um, just starting off, uh, a few things that I'm going to talk about today. Um, you know, main objective, content is king. Uh, we all, we've all heard that uh, before. The various formats uh, of content, some examples bad versus good content, uh, some blog examples, visual content, community content, uh, social content, vocal content, and then your audience, and then some efficient processes and how to actually create the content. So let's jump right in. Um, today's objective, uh, what I want you guys to get out of this is, you know, that there's value in creating good content for your website, for your business, for your store, and that it can have a tremendously positive impact on your business itself. Uh, creating your own content makes your business more relevant to the world, and uh, it's actually easier to create than ever before. Good content can be the reason someone goes to your website, 
the reason they shop with you and the reason they come back to your website and your store. If someone goes to your, your website, let's say you just launched it, uh, you know, Black Friday last year, you're very excited, gearing up for the holidays, and then people come back on January you know, 25th and you have maybe a Valentine's Day banner or maybe not. Maybe it looks exactly the same as it did in November. And a lot of guys know, a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about, where you might just say, oh yeah, we got to put that on the website. We got to freshen it up. And then you don't get around to it, right? So it's important to have um, sort of a seasonality uh, effect. Um, funny story, a lot of times in our creative strategy assessments, when we take on a new client, we ask, do you have any websites out there that you'd like to emulate? And, you know, we get a wide array of responses to that question. And one person was like, yeah, Tiffany.com. I love the way they, like, pull it up. Let me show you. I love the way they do this. On, oh, wait, it's, it's different. Hold on. Just a, a week ago, I, I wanted to show you the example, but it's different. It's like, well, because Tiffany knows what they're doing, and they have a lot of changes that constantly happen. The website's like this living, breathing organism, right? So, so never think of your website as a static thing. Um, the content should be ever changing. And I'm going to get into a couple ways that you can do it a lot easier than it, than it was before. So content is king. Um, we've all heard this before. And does anyone know its origin? So content is king. Uh, lots of people have heard it. Um, might not remember where it came from, but most would agree that the statement holds a lot of weight. The source comes from an essay that was written by Bill Gates in 1996. Uh, when the internet was just a little baby. Um, he's quoted by saying, content is where I expect much of the real money, um, where I expect much of the real money will be made on the internet, just as it was in broadcasting. And looks like he was right. Um, so why is content king? So I want to ask you guys, true or false? Good communicators are more successful than bad communicators. True or false, good communicators have better relationships than bad communicators. True or false, good communicators sell more jewelry than bad communicators, okay? Creating content is one of the easiest ways that your businesses can communicate with the world. And if you communicate well, then you will do very well in business. So, various formats of content it comes in many forms. And in the past, if you wanted to distribute content across a wide spectrum of people, it took a lot of time, work, and money. And most people didn't have access to these distribution and broadcasting channels. Very expensive to put a commercial out there or get in the newspaper or anything. Today, there are so many different formats that you can communicate and broadcast your own content to virtually any audience around the world within minutes. So... It's, it, we all know this, this is obvious, but it's just like a lot of times we don't, you know, take advantage of all the, the, the sources. So just to list a few, obviously, some of the main ones of, you know, being able to reach the world and who knows what Twitter will become, but, you know, um, but it is still a, a, a viable source to put your content out there. Just a little sentence. So I want to get into some good content examples. Um, I want to show you guys, uh, some of the examples are from you guys in the room, um, but good content doesn't mean good copywriting. It doesn't mean only a good blog post. Good content is also good design. So if you look at one example that I want to show you guys, um, web pages that are designed really well will always have more emphasis behind them than if you just throw words on a page as if it has a deeper purpose and more permanence to your business. Every statement on the page will have more weight to it, which will greatly affect how your content is interpreted by your visitors. So if you get a page professionally designed, you take one, a lot of times, and you know what I'm talking about, you go to a website, especially a jewelry website, and it says that Smith Jewelers, we offer ring resizing, pearl string, it's just bullets, a bullet, bulleted list. So when you land on the page, you just see a bunch of words, you could, you could practically brand every single one of these services. You create an iconization, create a little icon for like, you know, a fun little journey into where it's going to go, a landing page, 
about pearl restringing, about pearls. Or, oh, do you want to ed education about those pearls? Like you can go really deep. You think about repairs. You're like, yeah, yeah, we do repairs. We have a guy. He's our bench jeweler. He's been 45 years in the industry. But think about the person who has their grandfather's World War II watch. And he's like, it's prized possession. And like, I'm not letting you have this. And you're not touching this thing. Are you worthy of touching this beautiful family heirloom, right? So they need to trust you. So just jewelry repair alone, which obviously isn't the big fish bridal engagement, the things that you guys are going for. But as you know, the repair business creates those relationships, just like sometimes those Mother's Day pennants and the, the small, the little things that you sell. So the, the service itself is big. And when you have good content behind it about the services you provide and the things you do, it makes a big difference. So think about from a well-designed aspect of your content, you know, it could really hold a lot more weight, right? So less is more, obviously. You don't want to overwhelm, you know, the visitors with tons of words. You do want to have search engine optimized copy. So being able to have keywords interwoven through your website um, is very important. You know, it's, you have to have the words like jewelry repair, you know, watch battery replacement, things like that. Um, a way to feature your designers in a way that's, you know, very easy to navigate through, you know, just a design system around that. So these are pages that, you know, uh, sort of elements of pages that we've designed for some of our clients. Um, and you may hear me mention the uh, the e-commerce growth program, which we familiarly call EGP. Our e-commerce growth program is um, pretty tremendous. It's It's actually something that we're very proud of because it has actually created more results. It's more results driven than just design. Um, like in the past, I used to talk about a, a design and use an analogy of like wearing a nice suit or something, right? Which you can't attribute, you can't quantify. Like how much ROI is this suit gonna bring me, right? Like you can't, or your showcases or the mah mahogany or the, you know, the, the, the nice halogen lights. You can't, you can't really say that. And I used to say that that's the value of a good design. And it was, it was half true, but now the e-commerce growth program that we've built, I'm very proud of it because it's actually tailored to fit your navigation system, let people flow through your website, and it's geared toward online sales and or driving people into your store as a result, but finding things easily, having an array of products there. Um, and so when thing, we found that when things are designed well, people's e-commerce has increased. Someone increased our e-commerce by 42% just after releasing the new e-commerce growth program. So when you have well-designed pages, it really goes a long way and it's a great investment no matter what. It's a very small investment when you look at the actual outcome. So there's this 50-50 rule of there's a lot of content you can create yourself, but sometimes it is worth hiring us or anybody else to actually create some good content for you, even if it's a marketing company who's doing it, right? Um, so all these little, you know, sort of widgets that can exist on a page, um, you know, it, it makes a difference with the balance of images and copy. So, uh, when a business isn't afraid to show its personality, this can give a retail store a much higher approachability factor, especially for the crowd that meshes with that personality. Okay. In other words, like Brian said yesterday, don't, don't be afraid to be yourself. Okay, and, and, and wear it proudly. Um, with tasteful use of color, words, and phrases that highlight the attitude of the business, any content that truly encapsulates the brand will go a very long way for you. So here's an example, Amy, if you will. So this is Jim Bartlett's uh, fine jewelry. And I use their example because they're not afraid to show color. And as she was mentioning yesterday, when, when Brian asked, does anyone do video well? This little video here is a couple who comes in and sits down on the couch and tells their story. And they do a great job with it. But, but they, they've sort of sprinkled in a lot of personality in this, right? And they're not afraid to show color in, the, in themselves. And I, I applaud that because it, it does go a long way. You don't have to have the same vibes and the same colors, but I wanted to show this as an example of someone who gets it right. I'm gonna move this. Actually, I'll stop the video.
stop working for me? Oh, I gotta go back to the press. There we go. So if you support certain causes, charities, or anything community-based, this is gold, okay? So this needs to be promoted well on your website, very well. Creating content around the most human parts of your business will give people a deeper meaning behind their reasons for shopping with you. And it becomes more than buying jewelry for them, right? The process becomes like, I connect with this person. I connect with this company. My, like someone who might say like, oh, my nephew has autism and they, they support Cure Autism now. And I'm all about that. And that, that speaks to me. Like that goes a long way, right? So you guys know this and some people sit here and have, you know, deliver big, have newspaper, you know, deliver big checks to organizations and do a big event and things like that, ribbing cuttings, all kinds of things, but put it on your website, make sure it's prominent, tell a story behind it and, and let that be evergreen content that you're constantly producing around it. So, you know, here's an I, we Punchmark partnered with Diamonds Do Good uh, by creating these landing pages um, and if you guys work with them, and even if you don't, we can install these pages for you as well. It's, it, I think it's free. I'm pretty sure there might be a little setup fee, maybe, maybe or maybe not. But if if this speaks to you and you want to have content like this on your website, we can easily install it because it's been kind of pre-written. Um, there are many ways to engage your customers. Pun very much intended. Um, so your website should include creative ways for your visitors to easily get in touch with you, RSVP, enter to win, right? Sign up, contribute, and register for specific events, contests, and giveaways. And you want to engage your customer base. You want to come up with these creative ideas. So I'm using uh, Elle's example here with, I think it went extremely well, like the way it looks. They have this Lamine Door Couple 2023 promotion. Uh, you celebrate your love and you can win one of these prizes, right? Um, if you tell your story and here's how you enter to win, right? So it's, this is one big landing page that I, I chopped up into three. Um, but these are easy ways to just engage your audience and, and get them to say something about, you know, profess their love story, you know, and talk about their love story um, of how they met because this is huge. People, people like to, to see this, especially the people who are right in the field thinking about like getting engaged, you know, especially like the women who are picking out like all their, all their stuff, their, their dresses and, and everything else. And then the bridesmaids of that wedding also in a relationship, you know, you guys know this, you, you tell these stories, those bridesmaids are gonna identify because they were in the wedding or they will be in the wedding, right? So all these things have, you know, huge lasting effects. And if you use this information, you know, to your advantage and just you're celebrating love stories, right? But do it publicly, right? Get, get into it. And there are a lot of ways to ask, you know, for these stories. You could have things on Facebook, things on Instagram. You can, you know, say, hey, enter to win. You don't have to even give anything away. Um, but there's another idea I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit later that you could take it and run with it if you want. Um, but a way to, you know, really get people to, uh, tell you their stories. Um, customers don't always realize the extent that you guys will go to providing the excellence and the services that you offer. And it's up to you to promote those services in ways that set clear expectations and give customers a sense of trust when considering the utilization of a service, like I was talking about before with, with repairs. So easy ways to actually talk about the process. Um, this is Jay David, so I, I, they're here, so I have to show this. Um, even, you know, iconization, um, easy way to kind of go through the story. You guys have seen it before, you might even have it on your site when you show from concept to completion, the sketch, the wax, the, you know, the, the rendering and then the final piece. Uh, maybe somebody, maybe a bench jeweler working on something, showing the tools and everything, um, creating your next custom piece, um, easy ways to start a custom design project, um, really engaging the customer on, on that process. And for those who don't know, um, Punchmark has a uh, custom jewelry design wizard. If you don't already have this on your website, it's free to install. 
uh, the only charge is if you change, um, you can't see it at the top because that's blocking it, but there's a whole step-by-step -step process that you kind of go through navigation-wise. And uh, I have more screenshots of this later in the presentation, but it shows you um, if someone chooses engagement ring, then they're prompted with a few others, other options like halo or princess or you know single row or you know cathedral, and then they can kind of go through there. Whereas if they pick you know earrings, it doesn't prompt them you know for those other questions, right? Um, so it's a very easy way for people to initiate the conversation with you as they would in your in your store or through email or text. Uh, when displaying a variety of products or services, the most effective strategy is to design a landing page to contain this content. Landing pages are very similar to a website's homepage, okay, in the sense that the visitor can enter your site, they can digest a lot of information, a wide array of what you offer, like your company's billboard, but several billboards of what you offer, okay? They digest a lot of information in a short amount of time, and then they confidently know where they're going to go next, okay? So it's like your ultimate navigation um, designed in a way that you want, that, you know, you're, you're telling them where they, you want them to go and you're trying to promote that behavior. So these landing pages are really good for doing this, right? And it's, th this is a vital step. And, and one of the things that we really try to promote here is omni-channel uh, solutions, okay? Trying to create the same experience on the website that you guys have in the store and as close to it. And, you know, I, I like the saying, um, came up with this at some trade show seminar, but be more human on the website and be more digital in the store. And what I mean by this is when someone comes into the store and they say, um, you know, hey, what do you guys do? You're showing them stuff. Grab their email address. Don't be afraid to ask their email address. You have to digitize this event, okay? Um, our friend Ryan at Client Book is going to be talking about clienteling in a, in a bit later today. And just easy ways to capture that information, capturing their, their son's name, right? Things that you can use. So digitizing this conversation that you're having and putting it somewhere. And then on the website, being as human as possible, like wearing your heart on your sleeve, not being afraid to be yourself telling your story of how you started and really getting into it. Like this goes a very long way, having a chat on your website and talking through them as you guys, probably everybody in this room has, okay? Um, so the omni-channel solution is very important. And that was a little tangent, but these landing pages are really effective in showing the person the next target of where you want them to go because it's a lot of information. So a lot of times you can create a landing page around you know, one of your charities. You can create a landing page around the products and services, like, you know, you can even break, break it down to bracelets and have a whole landing page about bracelets. Because what's funny is someone might type in something specific on, on the search engine. And the more specific they go, the higher level of buyer's intent they have. If someone types in bracelets, then they may or may not be looking to buy a bracelet for their wife or their girlfriend or themselves. But if they type in like gold, 14 karat yellow gold cuff bracelet, they kind of know what they're looking for. And if you don't figure out how to get them to those products on your site, then they're just going to leave your site. So these landing pages, let's say someone typed that in and someone said 14 karat yellow gold cuff bracelet. They go to your site and because the Google algorithm knows that bracelets is a good category, they land on it and they see kids' bracelets and tennis bracelets. So they see these $14,000 diamond tennis bracelets and then these $68 kids' bracelets and they're like, I'm in the wrong place. I was looking for what? 14 karat yellow gold cuff bracelet. So they leave. So now you get a, a decrease in ranking for that keyword because Google sees that bounce. So if you have a landing page and when they land on that page and they see, okay, bracelets, I have, oh, tennis bracelets. Oh yeah, kids' cuff bracelets, boom. I'm in the right place. So it's an extra step, but it's no different than in your store. Someone walks in your store and says, um, you know, hey, like, obviously you don't say, can I help you, right? You say, hey, are you looking for a gift for someone else or something for yourself? Oh, a gift for, so. oh, what, it, what is it? Is it a special occasion? Yeah, it's a birthday. Okay, well, what, what's, uh, when's her birthday? September. Oh, you know, September's uh, birthstone is sapphire. Do you want to start there? You want to sure. Now, you guys do this every day in talking to people. Your website needs to do this. 
right? So Brian, my brother, he, he calls it, when you go to a jewelry grid page and you have like a big rings category, he calls it death by a thousand rings, right? Because you're just like, it's just choice overload. So anyway, these, I, I just wanted to stress the importance of how well these landing pages perform before I show you an example of a category specific landing page. And this is something that we do for um, the e-commerce e growth program, right? So we have categories, um, you know, we have different uh, earrings, fashion, and this is just the main jewelry category. So bracelets, necklaces, stud earrings. Um, it's basically like another homepage, but very product driven um, and very easy to kind of just waterfall down the page. Um, and I know, sorry, forgive me for scrolling fast in the little video clip, but, um, but just to kind of show you a little, uh, a way to um, highlight your top products and services and your top categories and something that actually performs very well. All right, so bad versus good content. We're gonna have a little fun because um, we've all seen bad content. Sometimes it's on our own websites, you know, but sometimes it's, it's like, wow, that, that thing's dated. Um, and so here's an idea, here's a, so while it makes sense to write search engine optimized copy, okay, don't forget about the human experience. Um, if someone lands on a page that has too much copy or simply doesn't have any structure, it can quickly create a sense of overwhelm for the visitor. So obviously, bad content and good content. I had to pull up your about page, right? So still a decent amount of information. It's the store's history, but you know it's done well and it's showing the staff and things like that, right? If you have website pages that are outdated, this will not represent your store well to so visitors who are constantly interacting with engaging, stimulating content all day, okay? People are just scrolling on Instagram and all over the TikTok. They're being very stimulated. Then they go to a website that's very outdated and they're like, this, I'm in the wrong place. I wouldn't give this person my $15,000 for an engagement ring, right? So it makes a big difference when you have uh, good content. Um, take pride in your content. And if there's a page that you feel could look better, you may wanna consider having it professionally designed, like that evergreen stuff we were talking about. So I found this website, thought it was pretty hilarious. Um, 1998 website, I guess, I don't know, right? Uh, versus good content, another example from, from Al over here, right? Um, so just, this is a homepage, and I think, Al, I, I believe you, work, you worked on this a lot yourself. Yeah, so, Elle is very good if you want to talk about good content. She's, she's, she's very well versed in it. So we're very proud of what she puts on this. So you don't need, you don't always need to have us professionally design a page. Um, if you have a layout already and you can fill in boxes and blanks and you can create sections, um, a lot of it can be done very aesthetically and pleasing to the eye. Uh, it's common for a page to start off as simple. Okay, and then over time, it becomes a cluttered mess without any content hierarchy or prioritization of what's most important. This becomes even worse of a problem when you don't have the formatting tools or design prowess to display your constantly evolving content. I'm bringing this up because we've had clients say, okay, uh, we just picked up this new brand. Can you put it in the header? And they're like, in the, in the header? Like, can we not? Like, what if we do put in the navigation or... No, I want it. I want it like next to my logo. I'm like, it's okay. Well, we did, did did this new thing. Can we put this like right here in our store hours in the header? Just put that's important because we need to put that right there. Can we? Oh, we actually have a, a Mother's Day sale and we want this flashing thing. Like, can we put it in, under here on the header? So now you're like you have your logo and all these important. Everything's important. And it's like if writing. Imagine writing a, a word document and you're flipping through and you're like. I'm going to make everything bold and I'm going to make everything italic. Everything's important, which AKA nothing's important, right? So the, the content hierarchy is, is critical for customers to quickly identify what they're reading, what they're seeing, where your products are and everything like that. And so you could see like, this is an example website I landed on and I was like, whoa, what, what am I even looking at? Right? This is like their updates page, their news page, or what would, to, you know, service as like a blog. Um, so just too much stuff. Asterisks, like what, what, is, what am I looking at, right? Um, all right, so segue into some good blog examples, okay? Um, blog is, it's a four-letter word, right? Um, it's hard to accomplish this because you think about 
the effect of a blog and why it's good. So if you look at the sort of structure of content through uh, what you watch, everyone here, I'm, I'm assuming most people in here have a Netflix subscription and or Hulu and or Disney Plus and or all of the above. Um, and so you look at the difference between like old school, because it still happens, they still make them, but movies, okay? You're going to sit for 90 to 120 minutes or sometimes longer through a movie, or you're going to sit 30 to 60 minutes through one episode of a series, okay? So evergreen pages on your website, your services, about us, our history, the categories, even though they evolve and change, those are your evergreen content. Those are your movies, right? Those aren't going anywhere. Your series, okay, is your blog. Your blog is a constant stream, okay? So think about some good examples here. Um, many times a retail store will make an attempt to create a blog and they will succeed, although for a short period of time. So unlike the evergreen pages, blog posts are expected to be a constant stream of content and it does not matter how far back the original posts are, okay? Your first post could be from 2011, and people will be fine with that. But make sure your last posts aren't also from 2011. And a lot of times, like, I'll go to a website, and I'll see our blog, and I'll look, and I'm like, wow, look at this. They got content. And the first blog post is September 2017. The next blog post is September 19th, to October 19th, 2017, October 20th, 2017. And then no more posts for six years right? And that happens a lot. So the name of the game is less is more, do what you can do, figure out digestible bite-sized things that you can actually tackle and just do those. You don't need to write a create like a lot. That's the perfect example of someone who took on too much and they, and the blog articles were very deep and, and everything, but clearly they didn't have the capacity to continue that track, right? So here's an example. Um, of another good blog. I'm, I'm using Elle. She's basically running the show over here. Um, I showed hers because she has depth, okay, of all these great things. And they look great. The images are great, okay? So that it's enticing. You know, solitary engagement rings, always a classic. Like, think, think about how easy it is just to write, like, that's gifts of love this holiday, right? Obviously, it's specific to gifts. Gifts for men who have everything, okay? These are great titles that are engaging, but also very well designed um, and, and you know, promote clicking through. Um, they're a big Rolex store, so a lot of Rolex stuff as well, um, but current, okay? This is a whole stream and it goes back, this is probably 2019, but we have stuff that was just, she has stuff that was just posted like last, last week or last month. So here is one of the posts, okay? How to start engagement, determine your budget, research, gather information, consider your style, preferences, choose a reputable jeweler, explore financing options, make the purchase, conclusion, okay? So you see how everything had a header, a H1 tag, everything had, you know, it was it had purpose. It was easy to digest. You could scroll down the page, find out what you want to read. You could forget the whole beginning part of it. Get right to the meat of it. Oh, they're recommending this option. Let me look at that option. So it's a, it can be a blog post can be a landing page that someone types in. I'm looking for engagement rings, okay, in city state. And they see this blog post and they enter through the blog post. And then that blog post promotes products, right? So it's a great way to capture through good SEO, good content writing, show someone tr trustworthy content that you're the jeweler that they should go to, and then showing them product, hook, line, sinker, right? This stream of content can have a personality of its own, okay? Even with its own narrative, it can also be subdivided into different blog categories, giving it a sense, sense of depth and consistency across each separate narrative, okay? However, don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't think about this as, oh, I Ross says, I have to create all these categories for my content. I have to create a gift guy category. And it's like, it's too much. Let's start on what you guys can handle. So here's an example of something I think was designed pretty well. Um, they have a few categories, uh, just a couple. My best life in jewelry and news. 
And in this case, again, celebrating their customers' love stories. It's so easy to do. This content has written itself, okay? The stories have written themselves by your customers. You just need to grab them and adopt them as your own story kind of, right? Because you're, you're a part of their lives. You, you played a part in this story. Yes, guy meets girl, guy takes girl to dinner, guy gets on one knee and proposes. You were at that dinner, represented in a nice little box, right? So don't forget that. You played a part in their lives. And yeah, you can look at selfishly, you're, you're claiming territory of their story. Like, but yeah, kind of, in a way, you're just celebrating their life. What's better than celebrating people? And you got this, it's rich stuff here. Um, and building trust, they're like, oh, wow, look at that. A perfect story, Meredith and Jerry. They might know Meredith and Jerry. They might just identify with Meredith and Jerry. When there's a healthy balance between education and products, blogs can be a great medium for this type of content. Teaching a customer something and then showing them a product that relates to what you just taught them can be a, an effective way to digitally build trust while selling jewelry, even if you're just educating them about a trend, okay? You don't need to be diving into the four, well, four C's as a, it's a buying uh, education, right? Like how to buy. How, how, how interesting is that? That one of the basic educational tools that GIA provides, a lot of other resources provide that you guys write yourselves even about the four C's of diamonds. You're teaching someone how to buy a product that you sell. Who else does that? Like go on YouTube and it's like, they teach you how to do something, how to repair this laptop. And I'm going to take great, grab these tools. They're going to go into how to do some, how to buy this. It's pretty cool that you guys can do that and, and dive into it. And yeah, it could be an obstacle because people are like, I don't even know where to start. So it's the reason why you have a four C's guide of buying diamonds, but don't make it a hurdle. Make it a segue into the actual buying experience. So. Um, another blog post showing, you know, just buying engagement rings, eternity ring guide, actually, this, this one is, um, what does it look like for men? What does it look like for women? Um, showing examples, um, and then shop this eternity ring, a link to the actual ring itself, um, how to shop, what to expect, what our service is all about, um, how we, you know, how our master, you know, uh, graduate gemologist sets stones, how all the things that people may want to know, may not want to know, but it's even if they don't read it or skim it, it's great SEO content for what you guys provide as well. So if content is king, then the community is the kingdom, okay? If, if you're ever wondering about what to write about, just write about your customers, like I said, or have them write about themselves. In this industry that creates symbols of love for the most special milestones in people's lives, it's never a bad idea to share a good love story. So here's an example of someone who just is capturing that, okay? It's very easy to do. You don't even need to write a whole book. And there's so many different ways to engage people to say, tell me your love story. Um, usually giving something away is nice. And I'm going to get into that as well. So here are some blog topics um, that you guys want, might want to consider. Staff favorites, this is an easy one, just to say you, you don't need to write all the blogs yourselves, okay? You might own the store, you might be the bench jeweler, you might be all, the accountant, you might be this head salesperson in your store, you might be all of the above. And a lot of times we wear a lot of hats. You don't also need to be the blog writer and, you know, so try to distribute and delegate some of that responsibility to your team. Staff favorites is a good way to do it because you say, um, I'm going to ask each one of you guys to pick something out of the safe and just, even if you don't like any of it, just let's fake it for a second. Pick something that catches your eye and just write a little something about it. It's really easy to do that. To put, like, How many times has a customer, a guy most likely, walked into your store and said, look, I I'm looking for something for my wife. And then you say, well, what does she like? And he says, I don't know. What is she like? You're the jeweler. You know what's trending, what's good. I don't know. I, I'm willing to spend like $12,000 on something, but if she's not going to like it, I'm not going to spend that. 
I'd rather get something else. I'd rather fix the bathroom a little bit and do, you know? So, so then you say, come here, come check this out. And of all the hundreds and thousands of pieces of jewelry, you walk over this showcase. You say, you see this thing? Take a look at that. And they're like, oh, that's nice. People like this? Girls like this? Like 30-year-old women like this kind of stuff? How much is it? $13,000? All right, wrap it up, right? Sometimes it's that easy because you guys led them to, the, to this one piece. Staff favorites? You get somebody to just write about something? Like this dazzling sapphire necklace is just awesome. Like I, I love it because the blue brings out, I wear a lot of blue and blah, 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 whatever, right? You let Sarah or whatever, anybody who works at your store write about one thing every week or every month. It doesn't need to be all the time, but those pieces will be pulled out and you'll find, you might be reordering that piece a couple of times now, right? Um, birthstone of the month, that's an obvious thing. You can just kind of copy paste Make it your own. And then at the bottom, don't forget in these blog posts at the bottom, link to a product. Okay. Always think about the flow. You've learned about this. Oh, this is cool. Birthstone of the month. January, garnet. Got it. Okay. April, diamond. Oh, show me some diamonds. So lead them into the actual buying process. Upcoming events. This is an obvious one. Um, I would encourage you guys to think about if you're not doing a lot of events or any events, or you may maybe have one event a year. Um, I know it's time consuming, but think about doing more events, even just make stuff up, especially in that tumbleweed season between, you know, like July and, and that whole spot where there's no holidays. Um, and, and you're, you're trying to think about half off half the store sales and all these other things, but have events and, and try to bring people in and write about them and show pictures from last year's event and have an RSVP to the event, have events, have reasons. Make up excuses on why you should just bring champagne in your store and have a little champagne toast to people. Celebrate couples and say we're doing a couple celebration event. You can just make stuff up off the top of your head, but bring people to your store, write about it, take a lot of pictures, and then publish it and put it everywhere. Celebrity sightings, this is always good. Um, J-Lo's on the red carpet. And she's wearing this, you know, thing that we happen to also carry, by the way, or we carry pieces from that same brand. Um, very easy to do. You might need to uh, use a stock photography service or something and, and pay for a photo or the use of the rights. Um, but there's ways to do it. Just don't just snag a picture of JLo and just paste it on your site because that, that you can get in trouble. Um, local community. Obviously, I've underlined this a lot. This is a really big thing. Anything you're doing in the community, taking pictures with large, giant checks. Um, talk, talk about why you support a, community, uh, a charity or why you support the community or, um, you know, get into it a little bit. Jewelry news. Um, obviously, things that like I, I saw one blog post that I'm, I, I like science and it just was kind of cool to me. But they were like, uh, this meteorite has like, uh, or this meteor has, I don't know how many tons of platinum and diamonds in it. And we'd never be able to get it, but it's just flying through the atmosphere or flying around the earth. And it's just like, like billions and billions of dollars worth of what, and it's just like, that's just cool stuff for, for someone like me to read it kind of, kind of a nerd to like go through and read stuff um, and educational content, right? Obviously things that relate to jewelry about your store, about, you know, the things you provide. Um, and then obviously new custom jewelry. Right, this is fresh off the press. Um, we're very excited about this. It's similar to you know, like staff favorites, but it's like this is brand new, or this is what we did for a customer. Here's the story of this piece, right? This is, uh, and then like Brian said yesterday, giving your customers full credit as if they designed it, you know? Um, so Steve and Linda came in the store, and Steve was telling me how, you know, he, his wife is very active and she didn't want anything with like high prongs that we're going to snag on stuff. So we created this like tension set thing is like get into the story, like talk about why you designed it, why they, wh what they contributed and then send them a link and say, here, we talked about your story and they're going to share that. Like, Oh, look, this is the piece I designed. Right. So there's a lot, a lot of things that it can kind of perpetuate. And even if only 50 people look at it and they share it with their friends, that's 50 people who are like, Oh, I know that guy. That's Steve. That's Steve and Linda. Look at that story. Look at the piece. Wow, it's beautiful. Oh, who designed that? Keeper Village Jewelers? Oh, 
guess where I'm going to go next time I have, you know, right? So visual content. Um, we dabbled around a little bit in different types of content, but um, since the world's collective attention span is that of a child, okay, let's think about children's books. The best children's book have pictures and illustrations. Um, your content needs to be accompanied by rich imagery to enhance the user experience of your visitors, okay? So I'm going to do a little test, and I, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to, uh, to get these, but um, what brand is this? Can anybody identify the brand of this image? Any guesses? Who? Oh? No? No? All right, this is to Corey. This one's hard, but they have a pretty consistent way of, of showing their imagery. And when, when you can just look at an image and, and recognize it, um, it's pretty cool. What about this one? Okay, immediate, right? What about this one? Trevor Mark, obviously the logo's in the middle too. What about this one? Not Gabriel. Who is it? Simon G. David, you're immediate. And sometimes you, you recognize the piece too, right? But the style, the black background that, you know, what about this one? No, yeah, okay, immediate. Um, so, so my point is, Imagery can be so powerful and you can recognize a piece too and you could, you know, but you know the style of photography that, you know, brands have. So the reason I show these examples is because these brands are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on this photography. And, you know, you guys are like trying to like take a quick picture of something and be like, put this on the website. Like, let's use these vendor images first. You know, obviously if you have the license to do so, and if you carry it and they're, you know, whatever, but it's important that you use that because it's leverage and it's visual imagery that can help sell, sell your products. Um, retail businesses spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, like I said, um, uh, on the look of their store and even more on their people, yet many don't invest in photography to show the world the best parts of their businesses. Um, it can take as little as one to three thousand dollars to hire a good local photographer for a day or two and capture great images of your store and your staff to use on your website, social media, and all other marketing channels. Okay, so you're you're when you do it right, don't just grab your iPhone and snag a picture of your beautiful showroom that you spent three hundred grand on. Right? Let's spend a thousand dollars and take some really good photos of this. Take good photos of your people, of yourselves your exterior, your showcases, your team, sketches even. Another example, Amy, right? Show some personality, okay? This is an about page um, from Jim Bartlett. And like, it's just a flash of color, but they hired a photographer, right? You didn't, this wasn't an iPhone picture, okay? And it's, it's pretty obvious that they did it right. They made it fun. They made it, their, their own, okay? Jewelry is meant to be worn, yet many jewelry websites don't include enough people wearing their products. Showing jewelry how it's intended to be worn on people can make the difference on whether someone decides to purchase from you or decides to go elsewhere. Like when we're buying clothing online, do we, do we buy things that have folded, you know, flat Stanley, right? No, we see, oh, that, that guy looks like he's my size and okay, see I'm from the side, like see how the blazer cuts back. All right, I'm gonna buy that blazer. And if it doesn't work, I could return it. It might get tailored, whatever. But if it was just a blazer laying on the ground or the or bed or the, the shelf, I like next, I, I would leave. I would try to find a place. So that's something that's meant to be worn, clothing. Jewelry, the same thing. So um, a lot of times you might have, so here's one thing, the gem light box. I wanted to show this first. Um, how many, raise of hand, show of hands, how many people have a gem light box? Awesome. Um, how many people who have the gem light box use the gem light box all the time? Okay. So that's the thing is process is big and making sure that, like I said yesterday about putting everything in your calendar, figuring out ways to easily create a process around something, right? Throw, I know Len Lenny does not like the post-it note system, 
that some of you guys might have devised, but maybe having a post-it note on your computer when you're writing product descriptions, um, there's like five components that you wanna make sure are represented, like the brand, the gender, the metal type, uh, care weight if it applies, uh, and the type of jewelry, right? So you could say 14 karat, and the, you know, if it, if it is a branded piece too, 14 karat yellow gold to Corey ladies, halo style, diamond, gemstone, engagement ring piece. And if you just make sure those are all covered, throw a little post-it note with all those bullets on it. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to do, just keep it there. And that's part of the process. Another part of the process is how and when do you take photos? Putting them into the, into the edge, into your point of sale. Um, but I also implore you to take some pictures of jewelry on people, right? It makes such a big difference. And when you do, like, you can, see, see how you can't even see your face? That's totally fine. You can cut people off at the eyes. It, like show the jewelry. And don't forget when you're taking photos, you're taking photos of light, okay? Photography is light. It's light and how it reflects off of. Jewelry's pretty reflective if you didn't know that. Shine some light on the jewelry. A little bit of light on the subject, but make sure the jewelry's front and center. Guy with the watch, how many, how many of you guys see that magazine picture, you know? Um, Close up on the watch. You don't even need to show my face. Blur my face out. Use portrait mode on your, on your iPhone. Invite your customers into your store. Take pictures of them wearing the jewelry, okay? Use that as the next time you sell the piece, you know, if you're restocking it, send it to them, have them share it. It just perpetuates itself. Like there's so, many, so much value in, in having your staff and or your customers or yourself showing your jewelry. And it makes a big impact. Like if it, it, show, it highlights the piece as it's intended to be worn and not just sitting, you know, on a, you know, pendant uh, cradle. Um, as you see, like some of these, no faces in it. Highlight the jewelry, get in close. So stock photography, okay? So this is a good one. This can fill in the gaps between the photos that you take of yourself and the photos that come from vendors. Um, all Punchmark clients, you guys have access to a stock image library um, in Site Manager. So if you go in the back end of Site Manager, you click on image library, it pops up. You can sort it by bridal jewelry, engagement, you know, couples, things like that. So here's an example of some of the images that are in our library. So you can create banners around this, just evoking emotion around some of the things that you guys carry. We do custom jewelry design. Well, here's a picture of a little bit of a wax, you know, model and, and sketch. Um, gemstones. So these are just stock images you can use. Sometimes when it shows jewelry and it's, and it's not vague enough, you know, you might not want to use this one piece. Like, oh, I don't carry that. People are going to look for that piece. So you can use it at your discretion. But um, all right, so community content. Um, billboards can be effective for brand awareness, but there are other ways of establishing uh, a visual presence throughout your community. One way is to support local artists who create murals uh, and even have a mural especially made for you to make a powerful statement or even tell a visual story about your business. So think about the permanence of this. Forget a billboard that might cost you $2,500 a month or more, $7,500 a month. I don't even know what billboards run nowadays, but depending on the territory, they could be expensive. Outside New York City, some are like 15 grand. So think about a mural. Think about the local bakery that has this nice brick wall on the side of it. And your store is like a mile down the road, but it's like this real estate. And who owns that building, the bakery? Can I talk to that person? And can I get an artist to come in and make a statement with like flowers and maybe jewelry and like whatever, even if it has nothing to do with your business, it could be about the bakery, but write an article about it. Say, hey, we got together with the local artists and we're all about art. We want to make, we want to beautify our city. And you don't even need to really put your name on the mural or anything. Just getting behind it and, and showing, oh yeah, that's the one, you know, that Smith Jewelers made. That's pretty cool. Or they got behind it, right? And there's a lot of things you can do. Lakeland, Florida had this system where a bunch of businesses got together um, and they did this. And so, some of these murals are part of that system. Some of them aren't, so forgive me if, um, but these are all from Lakeland, Florida. Um, but you see, like some people just kind of got into it 
Um, and people take pictures next to them. In Charlotte, there are a lot of these little spots with some cool murals and stuff, and they're just photo ops. There's this picture of all these hearts on it, this heart wall. Everyone takes a picture next to it, right? So it adds a lot of depth and color and character to your city. And this is a big community thing that you can do with some visual content uh, in your community. Um, getting your customers to fill out forms can be tough, right? Because there's usually a commercial purpose for filling out a form. Buy this, sign up for this, right? Um, but many people like to answer questions for no reason at all, like a quiz or maybe a prize. Um, quizzing your customers is a fun way to challenge customers on what they know about jewelry, your business, your community, or even just something you find interesting or fun. Like if you guys are Trekkies or you guys like Star Wars and you could have some Star Wars trivia. I could tell, I could tell you that thousands of people who would love to answer a Star Wars quiz, right? Even if it has nothing to do with your jewelry, you just want to do it for fun and engage people. Here's an idea. Which of the following gemstones is the hardest? Emeralds out, right? Which one of these stamps would you see on 18K gold? Which stone is considered a morning gem? And which of these diamond cuts is a square shape? So they could be as simple as this. You can make them complicated, gemological, doesn't matter. Not about your business, all kinds of stuff, but just engaging the audience. In today's world, consumers typically won't make a decision on which brands they will support until they get validation from other people. Public reviews have become one of the most important contributors for a store to establish the level of trust required to gain new business. These reviews are considered user contributed content because they're written by people and they give retailers an incredible opportunity to create your own content by replying to the review as a nice little public dialogue to the world, okay? You're having these human conversations about your business. Now, here's a couple of examples of these. This first example is not so good. Great spot, Local, low key atmosphere, excellent food. Thanks for the five stars. Glad you enjoyed. Opportunity missed. You could say so many things, okay? Here's some examples. This is an example of a robotic response because as you see, it seems nice. She copied and pasted the same exact thing in both reviews. So that's, you could see right through that. You'd be like, oh, look, a warm response. Oh, look, the same response. Okay, who is that? Is that a person or a robot who wrote that? A decent response here, right? They talked about, these are just like dealerships, right? John, it's great to hear that our service team was able to help you out. We always love to hear when our customers leave satisfied. Quickly and accurately serve it. So they're talking about value here. They're restating the company's values in the response, okay? Quickly and accurately servicing our customers' cars is always a goal for us at White River Subaru. And hearing that we lived up to that goal is very encouraging. Come on, like, it's perfect. Um, I won't read the review, but McKinnon, glad to learn you enjoyed working with Derek and Casey. Thank you for posting. Appreciate your business. It's okay, but you want to be, you want to be keyword rich, not for the bots, because the bots don't really scrape this content, okay? You won't really get better ranking for that, but good keyword content for the humans who read it. Here's an example. Hi, Robert. It's great to hear that you had a five-star experience purchasing your 14 karat white gold to Corey, whatever, right? Congratulations. All of us at Prime Toyota Boston uh, appreciate your business. Positive feedback. Um, hi, Brian, for you to say it was the best car buying experience I've had makes our day. Restating what the customer said. Um, thank you for a fantastic review and for recommending Justin. All of us at Audi Westwood are grateful for your business and wish, you know, you and your wife safe driving. We hope you enjoy that beautiful sparkling tennis bracelet. All right, so that's public content. Lots of opportunities there. Social content. Now, I'm not a social guru or anything, but I happen to know someone in this room who is. She's sitting right there. So to put you on the spot, um, she, she does great posts. And, and if you want to follow her, I want to show you some of the stuff that she posts. Um, it's actually really good. Very practical things you can do every day. I don't have audio on this little video, but um, well, let me just, with the number of social channels and types of content that can be dispersed throughout each, there are virtually limitless opportunities 
for broadcasting content. So in the in independent retail world, the biggest challenge is when businesses overthink it and become paralyzed by the limiting thoughts that prevent you from posting anything or anything meaningful or engaging. But there are a few who get it and they end up educating those who don't, whether directly or indirectly. And here's an example of someone who gets it. So just read the words. So a bracelet hack using a paper clip, encouraging jewelers to do the same. It's really easy to do. Right? Simple. Simple and straightforward, something you can do within seconds. You gotta set yourself up, you know, but pretty easy to do. Um, having a consistent presence on social media can be time consuming, but just like writing a blog, it's about choosing topics that interest you and channels that align with your brand. So here's an ex another example, thanks to Alex, um, that it's simple and easy to execute through social media. Right? And look at the response. She shows the response to that video um, at, at the reel that, that she posted. If you want to follow Alex, Diamond Diaries with underscores. Okay? Um, and pick her brain. Sorry, Alex. No, but she, she's great. Like a lot of the stuff she does, it's about things that are tangible, right? You, you're not trying to, you know, be an influencer and have like 3 million followers. Like, that would be nice. But you don't, you don't, getting there is a whole different story, right? You want to engage the people who follow you, get more followers, and, and keep that perpetuating human conversation with people, whether it's through reels, whether it's through anything, okay? Just telling your story. Lots of channels that are there that you can easily uh, grab. Everybody have the information that they need here? Diamond Diaries? All right. Um, some companies are a little bolder in their social marketing strategies. And this could either go well or not so well, okay? The more bold that you are. But when it goes successfully, many other business owners are like, I wish I did that, right? I wish I thought of that. Or I wish I had the same level of confidence to pull that off. So here's an example of something that was years back. Um, you guys might remember this, um, but Wendy's, uh, I'm not the only one who spits bars. Our bars are like, Spicy chicken, grab a spoon because the frosty thicken, grab a seat because these rhymes are slick. It's like, what? Crazy. Like, who does that? You'd be like, I, people would roll their eyes at me if I did that. Like, I'm not going to do that. But, like, if you're the brand, you can pull that off. Okay. So, bold, they're, bring, they're bringing it, right? Oh, your food is pretty good. I have to ask though, why are your burgers square as opposed to being circular? <laughs> Just being witty and not, you know, like you gotta love it. Like who, who's, who's that bold, right? It's, you have to, you have to, it could go well or not so well, right? But they, they pulled it off. Oh. All right, so some vocal content. Um, I brought this up because, uh, as you guys might know, um, and we're doing a live episode today, uh, we started a podcast called In The Loop. In 2020, uh, we, we always thought about doing a podcast that was like more evergreen, but at the time, COVID hit. 
And we were like, our clients are going to freak out. Like what they're, they're closing their doors. They got like all this stuff going on. Like we need to help them because we have tools, we have resources. We, we got to like, so we put together a podcast called the Jeweler Survival Kit. Um, and we didn't know if it was going to help anybody. Alex was a guest on one of the episodes. Um, forgot about that. Um, and we didn't know if it was going to kick off or anything like that, but people were like, thank you guys so much for like taking the stance and providing this, you know, just talking us through this kind of stuff. We were, were freaking out and to hear other jewelers stories, of what they're doing during this time, whatever. And then it turned into, we said, we want to keep this going and not so glum, right? Not on the coronavirus and all that's going on. So we created in the loop and we spun it into a different thing about e-commerce and digital marketing advice. Um, I want to show you first, well, I wanted to bring that up, but um, for us, so in, additional, in addition to the channels described, vocal content can be a very powerful outlet to tell your story. From being a guest on a podcast to having everyday conversations with people, there's no better advocate of your brand than yourself through your own voice. So there's this guy. You might have anybody familiar with this podcast? So he's a jewelry store owner. His name is spelled uh, K O E H N. Uh, Andy, but he's, it's pronounced Kane, Andy Kane. Um, and it's like Kane and Kane jewelry. And, um, you know, this is, he has a podcast about like how, you know, how to buy like a guy. Um, and so this is his way of promoting his brand, you know, to his customers. Um, we have in the loop and I can't even tell you how we're, we're so proud of it. And Mike Burpo, if you guys don't know, um, he's, he's an amazing host. He's great at, he's very approachable, right? So he, he brings these guests on and, you know, they tell their story um, and it ends up being really good. And the feedback we get from people are like, I listen to you guys every day. We went to an RJO show and, uh, you know, Mike mentioned, you know, yeah, I do like the In The Loop podcast. They said, wait, talk again? Say something? I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. I listen to you every day, right? So it, I just wanted to share that with you because it works for us. In fact, two weeks ago, someone, someone signed up for a website and said, I wanted to let you know that I signed up because, I, because of In The Loop, because I listen to your podcast. So just think about, you might not have the bandwidth to start a podcast, but that doesn't mean you can't be on one. It doesn't mean you can't seek out people who are local doing these certain things, supporting the same communities and charities you guys support. Talk about that with your voice, right? Um, this is how we, we show it on, a, on our website. Um, and secondly, um, all right, on April 11th of this year, uh, we lost a, we lost a good person. Um, she had a pretty tremendous impact on the industry and the in individuals around, um, her name was Kate Peterson. And I know a lot of you guys know her, um, before her seminar, she was known to make last minute changes and was quoted as saying to a friend, Got to have the latest information. We owe the audience that. Um, so, as a small tribute to Kate, um, here are some of her vocal. Here's some of her vocal content um, from a podcast a few years ago. I just want to show you a minute of it. to play that as you know a, a nod to her and you know just um she was an amazing person but she's right um it, it brings a um 
a point of the fact that when you're, you're talking to customers, you need to speak in their language, right? Um, you need to be able to uh, talk to them in a way that they're going to be able to understand what you're selling, what you offer. Um, so segue into understanding your audience. Who are these people that you're talking to every day? Um, how is good content defined? Good content is defined. The only people who can rate content is the audience. What's funny is that statement's a little bit wrong. Let me change that. The only people in robots who can rate your content is the audience, right? So you, you know that anything you write, anything you put out there is for the humans and for the bots, mainly Google, right? But you got to make sure you're writing for both. But they rate your content. You don't, okay? You could say, oh, this is good content. And then someone's like, eh, I don't know. You kind of talked about yourself a lot. It was very self-gratifying writing that story. But have your audience in mind when you write about your story. How does this affect them? Right? Think about one person, one customer when you write something. So what content does your audience want? They want educational content. Talk about everything from how diamonds are mined to how you, you, know, you clean and store your jewelry. Okay? Even how to buy jewelry. Shop for seeds. Uh, branded content. Talk about what's new from the brands you carry. Even telling the brand story. Adopting that as your own. Uh, jewelry trends. What jewelry products or categories are selling right now? Like what's hot? Okay, this is really big. Um, and then community content, okay? Speak directly to the customer. Talk to the customer on the things that they believe in, especially millennial and Gen, Gen Zs. They're all about the deeper meeting. You've had people probably come in your store and literally get human with you and say, what makes you tick? Why, why do you sell jewelry? How did you get started? And sometimes these people take it there because they care about your story. And they're still trying to appraise the situation of whether to be a patron of your business or not. So efficient content creation, I'm almost done here. Um, start by choosing a channel and format that works for you, okay? So some of the things we talked about, you might not start a podcast, right? You might not be designing uh, amazing images, but you might be a decent writer. You might have, you have a passion for jewelry because you're here. Right, so you, you, you've, you've done something, you've established your business, talk about that, get into that process, anything that works for you. But what's interesting is, and is the more constraints you have, the more creativity you have. It's a very interesting paradox. Think about how many opportunities you have to tell your story right now. You have all types of channels, you can do anything. We could go live right now on Facebook and make this really big thing, right? But why? Why would we do it? Who are, who are we talking to? What's our motivation? Just to be a clown and just say, you know? So we need to drill it down. We need to think about a very specific thing. And sometimes we need to limit ourselves. Um, we need to like give ourselves a challenge. Say, I'm going to make a piece of jewelry and I'm going to choose three things. And I'm going to choose them from a hat. And the first thing I choose is rock okay i need to incorporate rock or the idea of rock the second thing i choose is and it's like trees all right the third thing i choose is family well those are interesting things but all right so now i need now my task is to incorporate those three things into a ring or into something else and i'm going to figure it out and even thinking about those three concepts you guys are probably even thinking about oh i'll probably make something you know use a geode and do whatever right like that's the thing is when you limit yourself, the more constraints you have, it actually gives you the liberty to go 100 miles an hour in this direction. It gives you the authority to do that rather than being like, I don't know what to write about. Like choose something, go deep into it. Um, use a content calendar to plan your content. Um, some people uh, you know, think about two weeks to two months out about what you're going to write. And think about, you know, things in advance. You don't need to say, oh, I need to write something today about today. We're having an event today. Let's write about it. So try to think in advance, but only, only take on what you can handle. Um, pick a time of day that works for you. And a lot of times creativity works really well in the mornings. You get to work, you know, take your mundane tasks. We were talking last night about watch batteries. Um, Bob goes in from seven to nine in the morning and just gets all his watch batteries done, right? A task-oriented thing. And I suggested maybe, just maybe, you think about 
the challenging things, the strategy things of your business, the things that take a lot of thought or writing a blog, the things that take a lot of creative energy, do those first with your cup of coffee as you wake up into your day and then save the watch batteries for when you're brain dead from all the customers. <laughs> do that at 4 p.m. or if you have a chance. It might not work out for you if you're always on the sales floor and you're busy, but try to think about that as far as time. Um, you can also use a scheduling service like Later. If you're, anybody here of Later? So later is a service that you can post mainly to Facebook. I think Instagram they were working on, but you can post like a month in advance, create a content calendar, post everything in advance, and then just get back to your job. Do it all in like three hours for the next two months and then walk away from it. And then your social media strategy is running for you. Um, you could even use artificial intelligence, okay, to write copy. And I bring that up because today, this is crazy. The stuff that you can do with AI is bonkers. It's insane, okay? Um, it's scary, it's all the above. So many people are using it. In fact, Jim, who was sitting up front over here yesterday, he had to leave. He told me they write hundreds of articles like per week. It's like just with AI, just write. We proofread them, we edit them. But I wanted to show you guys something that, so first of all, artificial intelligence such as Jasper, and chat GPT, AI, um, have had a significant impact on content creation. I asked chat GPT, what are you? So I'm gonna let chat GPT tell you what it is. I am chat GPT, a large language model developed by OpenAI. I was created using the GPT, generative pre-trained transformer architecture, and trained on a, ma on a massive data set of text from the internet. My purpose is to assist users in generating human-like responses to their questions or statements. and it's scary what they can do. They had AI write an entire Seinfeld episode. It wrote it, the entire situational Seinfeld episode in a time frame of something that would take 22 to 24 minutes. And it wrote it, and it was actually a funny episode. Pretty crazy. Couple trends. Need, you need a graph in your slides. 19% um, of the articles tested had 50% or more content generated by AI already, excuse me. <laughs> See, AI is buzzing into my microphone. 90%, um, this person believes that by 2025, in a couple of years, 90% of the content could be powered by Dolly and ChatGPT in the next two, three years, which is a crazy thought. And I think it's probably gonna happen. It's gonna, it's gonna be a game changer. So create a, here's a ChatGPT prompt that I did the other day. I said, I'm a retail jewelry store owner looking to create more content on my website and on the internet. I need ideas to write about that will engage my audience. Please list some ideas and topics that I can create in various formats and channels that will get the most engagement from people. A bunch of stuff, I, that whole first one. How to select an engagement ring is the first one the history and significance of various gemstones and precious metal, different types of jewelry styles, how to wear them, top jewelry trends, goes on and on. Very relevant topics, like these are great. Well, thank you, ChatGPT. In fact, you can create different types of content around these topics, it went on. Tell me this, blog posts on your website, videos for YouTube and social media, infographics or visual guides, podcasts or interviews with industry experts, social media posts, email newsletters. So it not only told me what to write about, it told me how to write it, Pretty crazy. Another chat GPT prompt. I'm a retail jeweler and I need to make an engaging form on my website that invites customers to tell us about the type of jewelry they're looking for us to design for them and to share as much information with us about what they want us to design without scaring them away with too much information. Please help me with this form. So as I mentioned earlier, and I'm gonna show you an example of it because it's kind of uncanny how our form could have been created by ChatGPT. So these are the tips that they're giving. So at the top is kind of hidden. Um, so it even says, like it kind of repeated it back to me, um, to not be too intimidating. You don't want to scare customers away with too many questions or a complicated layout. Use clear and concise language. Um, Include relevant fields. You should have the most important information you need. Type of jewelry, like bracelets, et cetera. Other optional fields, 
like their preferences or the occasion. Use visual aids. Uh, consider using examples of the jewelry type you offer. Um, allow for contact to provide their name, email address, phone number, uh, and then offer a submit button, obviously, at the end so they could submit and let them know when, to, when they can expect to hear back from you. Um, And here's the form fields that it's suggesting, right? So it, give, it just gave me all that stuff. And this is our form. So just to go through it a little bit with you, right? We use visual aids. We're trying not to scare them away. You know, you click engagement ring, you click double halo. Um, what's, what's your favorite diamond shape, round? Do you have any photos or links? Yeah, add some links. Another way is to show the examples of what they're looking for. Do you have old jewelry? Sure, we have old jewelry we have. We could, you know, white, white, gold, and diamond jewelry we'd like to add into this piece. What's your budget? Budget. You could add a little text about whatever. Um, how far are you from our store? Are you local, too far to visit? And then the information, right? We, we prompt them at the end, because usually when the form says, what's your email? And then we'll, then we'll give you the secrets. You get them in, involved in this work. So anyway, if anyone wants this installed on their website, um, it's free and we can add this to your site. Um, what are your preferred methods of contact? Uh, and then enter your human, aren't you? So maybe not. Um, 